Hello everyone, so in this video I want to give you um, an overview of what has changed in Habakkuk in version 2022 and for this I will use a simple model that was populated with 2019 that one and I will uh, load it both in um, so in 22.3 version both the legacy interface and the new interface and I will do a side-by-side -side comparison between 2019 and 22.3 right. So let's have a look first at the model in 2019. Um, as you can see, it has four components. Connection, um, which are here, this Kupkin. So this Kupkin in Hypermesh, there are star couplings um, in Abacus. And they are star coupling with surface-based, uh, no, not based surface definition, as you can see here. Uh, and this is important, I will come back later on it. But um, the Kupkin, they correspond to this definition. Uh, we now then have two brackets and we have one cradle. So the brackets, uh, I don't remember um, if they are 2D or 3D. Let me try to pick one of the elements just to review. Okay, it's in there. Yeah, solid elements. Okay. So the first cradle is connected to the first bracket sorry is connected to the cradle with these couplings and on the opposite hand we connected the bracket to the cradle with a tie contact which we can retrieve here. We have this tie which I uh, define using the auto contact in the contact manager and we have these two surface of elements. A part of this we have the one node step. Um, with two load collectors, one for the constraints and one for the force. We have three materials, uh, one temp, uh, I need to review why it is there. And we have three properties, cradle, bracket, which are shell sections, solid section, and we have a star surface interaction. So now that I've shown you uh, how to the model was organized in 2019. Let's move to uh, 22.3, starting with the legacy interface. And let's look entity by entity what has changed. So first difference that you can see, you have now, instead of four components, there is there are only three components. And if you look at the model, you see we have the brackets and the two cradle. So the coupkin, the couplings, are missing. Why are they missing? Uh, because we moved these couplings from elements to a new entity, which is called constraints. And this is only part of the answer, because I told you when I opened the text file, this is the surface-based coupling, so it was an element. In Abacus, you can also define with your coupling with an element-based surface. And if you were doing so in um, Hypermesh, it was not considered as an element anymore, but it was uh, stored in the group section. So for the same entity in Abacus, we were not consistent and we were proposing two different locations. And this had a consequence, especially when you were not able for an um, element-based surface to check the connectivity between your components. So we moved uh, these um, couplings to the constraints. So they now appear as a flat list. We do not have a collectors for the constraints. And what you, um, you can show hide every single of them. And from 22.3, it was not available in the previous version, sorry. Um, from 22.3, you will get as a prefix of each constraints the name of the component. In case um, in 2019 you had multiple components to store different couplings, then you will retrieve um, the component name as a prefix in 22.3, starting 22.3. So this is the first change. Um, star couplings being moved to uh, these constraints. Uh, the kinematic coupling uh, group are not con um, concerned yet, but uh, eventually they will be moved to constraints too. 
Let's have a look at the second entity, the groups. So what we see here is that we had three groups in 2019. We just have one group uh, in 2022, that's three, sorry, uh, which is only the tie. The reason is uh, that Abacus was the only solver for which we stored the surface of elements inside groups. Uh, for those solvers, uh, it was considered a set of set segments. So now, if you want to retrieve your um, contact sets, uh, either you can go, and this is something that, that is in the latest uh, versions, but you can edit directly your sets from the contact, or if you want to review them individually, uh, you can retrieve them in the set segment section. So no need to go directly to the entity, you can pilot them from the uh, from the top um, entity, which is a tie, and you can here change the elements and go for changing the elements if needed. So, ah, sorry, yeah, I can close it. So this is modification number two, um, the groups. We still have two load collectors, one load step. Um, what you may see, uh, I don't know if it was the case in, oh, I, oh, it's still come on with 22.3, so no, oh, in 2019, so I will come back later on it. Uh, output blocks, we still have two output blocks, still three properties, and now what is appearing that you didn't see uh, in the previous versions is the sets. In the previous section, for different reasons, we were not exposing the sets, even if the sets were uh, largely used in Abacus. So let's have a look at the different sets that are exposed now. We have the sets, the three sets, which are corresponding to the constraints. And again, no need to see the constraints to or to oh yes if, if you're sorry let me pick just one constraint if you pick one constraint you can review this surface and again you don't need to say okay this is my surface of interest so then I need to go to my set no you can just from your constraints right click edit your the, your set of interest so you you don't need to manage the sets by themselves just go to the uh, parent entity so again, three sets coming from the constraints. Then we have two sets coming from the loads. Uh, and what is missing in the legacy interface, and I will show uh, later how it is done in the new interface, but here the parent entity, we do not see um, the corresponding sets. So here you need to go directly in the set if you want to modify it. Uh, which is not great, uh, I agree. But this is how it is done in, in the legacy interface in 22. So, which means we still have three extra sets. What uh, do they correspond to? From 22, we are moving away. Uh, this is a, a long-term development, uh, but we are moving away from components and assembly in order to, in order to go to parts and part assemblies. There are multiple reasons for it. One of the reasons you may frequently hear is for the connection with um, uh, PDM, PLM systems, which is one possibility, but not the only one. And we know that we have a lot of customers not using it, um, not using such systems. Uh, it's also because we're bringing more intelligence into the parts. Uh, we're bringing um, some I a features such as the possibility to detect instances, so parts being uh, the same, so that you can just mesh one of the parts and synchronize the two parts so that the mesh is propagated to the instantiated part. And we are also bringing from 22.3 some classifications, so it will not be exactly the same parts, but you can say that different parts which look similar, for instance, they are representing nuts or they are representing bolts or etc. etc. So this is 
some mandatory, some required technologies that we needed to bring in HyperMesh, which could not be supported by components. So we're moving away from components. And one of the steps for moving away from components for Habacus um, was to get rid or disconnect the EL set, which was written. Uh, so let me go back to the ASCII file. We had uh, some EL set which were written for the component um, in 2091. We disconnected from the component. Um, and so we expose it directly as sets from 22. If this sets were used only for the components, so which you can check by using uh, the references, and you should see only elements, so which means if you don't use it in any contact or whatever, uh, then it is safe for you to, to remove them. Otherwise, it is better that you keep them. Uh, and now the change of paradigm is that instead of having the, comp the, the EL set being defined on the component, the, the EL set will be defined on the property. Which means when you export um, an Abacus model from 22.3, you will see extra EL set information starting with HM prop prefix which are the new uh, which are the, the new EL set to define a single physical part uh, for Abacus. So these are the differences. So these loads um, comes from the um, constraints and boundary conditions. This one are the ones from the former components and these are the ones coming from the constraints. And again, the set segments are the ones that were previously in the groups. Now, just let me load a new interface. There is one first change um, in the way we organize the browser between the new and the legacy interface. As you, have, as you may have noticed, we increase the, the number of entities here we expose more uh, information, which means somehow the model browser being a flat list was becoming less and less performant. So with a new interface, the model browser is not a flat list anymore with all your entities. It is a table of content. Um, and you will see only the synthesis for each of your entities. So let's say, for instance, you want to go to load collectors, you will see um, your two different load collectors and you will have even those uh, new entities loads where you can have directly your boundary and C load. Uh, just note um, that it will open a tab here every time you double click on one entity and just make sure if you hit boundary for instance it will filter on the boundary only and you need to go back to the load after a while. So if you want to see all the load, so generally I prefer to double click directly on the parent entity here and you have the possibility to, to add, um, I don't have an extra, okay, I don't have extra information here for the loads, but this is fine. And what is nice if I look at the um, forces or constraints here is up, uh, in the legacy, 22.3 legacy, I was not able to see the reference to my set. Here I have the reference to my set and I can edit it directly from, um, from my force. And another difference is that in the new interface, you don't have the um, set segments anymore. So if I go to the sets, you will see that you have the cradle bracket, which are element based. Uh, you have the loads, uh, cradle bracket and Kupkin. So you have two extra, um, your two, your two 
set segments, they are organized sets, and you see that the different uh, visualization here compared to the um, other sets, which are here star n set or star el set. So this is how you distinguish. And uh, has it been changed in 22.3 more? Um, do we see the card image? Support set type. Okay. No. Okay, I would have to discuss again with my colleagues. I wanted to, to ask for the card image to be to be available. Uh, let me try to expose some of the entity. No. Uh, property entities elements. Let me hide it. So here are the differences that you can see between uh, if you look at the new interface and yeah, I find it more easily to to browse um, over on TT, especially if you to find your sets, uh, just go to the loads. So this is uh, a habit to, to change, not to see everything from the um, directly from the model browser, but to, to go to the tabs in order to review the information. But then you have all the attributes, including the sets, and you can edit the sets directly from the structure. Also, you can browse, which was not really possible in the, in the past. If I go, for instance, to load and hit A for all, I have my uh, forces, and I have one simplified representation of my SPC, which is here. So let me hit this load, for instance, and I can just right-click, edit one load, and then I have this pop-up where I can do the same things, um, edit my selection, change my selection, and I could do the, I can do the same for the, the SPC. Um, now, as a last uh, step, let me go to the export. I want to export the solver deck. So if you want to export your solver deck, there are some options uh, that you need to be aware, especially if you want to be able to load back your model into uh, 2019 or older. Um, and for this, you need to take uh, care of these options. So we, we have the export legacy commands with the do not export TL set with same name as component. Um, you have the expand surface, star surface. So here, uh, this option, it's for the solid elements. So in uh, version 2019, there was, um, let's say that you had some elements whose face for contact was, was uh, face number two and some other elements whose face for contact was uh, face number one. You had one line for each element ID with the given um, face ID, etc., etc. In uh, from 22, we have a consolidate list, which means we have one EL set with the face ID one and all elements belonging to this um, or having this face ID uh, for the contact, and then an EL set with uh, for face uh, two, etc., etc. But if you want to load your model back into uh, Hypermesh 2019, you need to check this expand star surface. Also, um, there were in back in 2017, 2019, there were some um, quotes that could be used in the entity names. So you may have to check also this. Uh, um, this option. This is not mandatory. Uh, this is up to you to, to check if that can help for, for, your, um, for your model. So here was an overview about what has changed, uh, what can be done if you want to change back or load back your model into hi um, Hypermesh 2019 uh, or every version lower than 2022. Um, Maybe one last word is about what we commit regarding this uh, 2022 version. The, the INP format has changed, and the, as I stated earlier, the, pro, the, the L sets are now on the properties, 
instead of the components. There are development reasons for this, so we cannot move backward um, on this topic. And we cannot commit that the INP structure itself won't change. What we commit is that your model that was running in 2019, it has to run once you load it in 22 and run it with Abacus. If it is not the case, please report uh, your model to us so that we can understand and fix things. But our commitment is that any model that was running in 2019, it should run in 2022. Uh, it should run after having been imported and exported from 2022. So thank you everyone for having reviewed this video and um, see you next time for another video. Thank <laughs> you.